What's going on everybody? Uh, so I haven't made one of these in quite some time and I don't even really remember how to start one of these videos, <laughs> especially with a thousand things uh, going on or to talk about. So right off the bat, I want to thank everybody for being so compassionate and kind and um, you know thoughtful in your responses to Emily on that last video that was extremely challenging for her um, and amazing that she she actually went all the way to do that to try to make herself feel a little bit better and um, give you some insight into you know how difficult it's been the past year and a half for her and you know any of these anxiety related problems um, or having a lack of friends and things like that pales in comparison to what Emily has to deal with every day and what we've been dealing with, you know, the last year and a half or so. Um, so yeah, I really want to thank everybody because that honestly, regardless of how difficult it was for her to make that video, um, just like these videos that I make, I think that it was helpful for her to, to see how many people she can relate to and then how many people out there that watched it can relate to her. If you go back and look through the comments, there are hundreds of people who have gone through similar situations and, you know, dealt with probably one of the worst things in the world. So, um, yeah, thank you guys again so much. She appreciates you and I appreciate you. So to jump into the main topic of the video, I already... I already made a video like a week and a half ago, but I was it was pretty reactive and a little too aggressive for this channel, I think. And although I would love to post it, I think I'm going to instead go about it in a little nicer way, a little less aggressive and frustrated way, especially because I've had time to uh, sit there and, you know, let myself relax a little bit about it, even though it's still very frustrating. So, as you're aware, I'll try to keep this short. The last one went way too long. Um, as you're aware, I had, um, you know, contemplated potentially ending some developing friendships over in Arkansas before we moved over here. And I got some good feedback and some reinforcement of the idea that, you know, even if you're moving away, you can still work on those friendships and things like that. So. Um, one of the ways I was able to potentially keep in touch with somebody was I broke the cardinal rule of real estate, which is to never um, rent to a friend or family member, and in this case, a friend. Um, so I won't go too far into detail just for the sake of this video. Um, and. I don't know even really fully what this channel is for, but I don't want to vent to the extreme. I just want to kind of break down a little bit of what happened and what started the breakdown of that friendship, which honestly was never really a friendship to begin with. But anyway, um, so I'm trying to think of the best way to go about this without going too hard. Um, so we had that house in, in Arkansas that we um, needed to rent out or sell. So we we're renting it out. And the friend of mine in Arkansas um, said, hey, man, you know, I'll rent this place out regardless of it being not really making that much sense because the house is larger than um, anybody alone needs. But so he's, you know, saying, hey, I'll help you guys out. I know it's a tight spot, you guys are moving quickly, and so I'll rent from you. And how do I put this? I'm not even gonna say it. So anyway, we gave him a deal, significantly less than the house could rent for, just because he's a friend, so I'm trying to help him out. But really early on, there were trouble signs um, as far as not only this rent in the house goes, but just him as a friend just based on the fact that it's mean to say, but I don't even know if it's mean to say because it's a characteristic, but um, 
early on, I kind of figured out that this person um, was pretty dishonest and a pathological liar, and I don't think they even realize it. And they would probably victimize themselves if they heard that. And if they do hear that on this video, regardless of how you know nice and cool somebody seems like they could be, there's a certain point where when somebody leeches and takes advantage of somebody's kindness, not only my own kindness, but Emily's kindness, um, there's an issue there. So um, early on, I found out this person was being dishonest about what they did for a living and among a bunch of other things, and I'm not gonna go into any specific detail like I did in the last video, because I don't think there's you know, any sense in doing that. It'll just frustrate me more, but um, a lot of these lies, a lot of these, you could call them white lies because they didn't have any significant impact on me at the time. And some of that could stem from their insecurity or whatever the other um, reasons might be. But anyway, you know, I should have went with my gut and saw, hey, all of these mounting white lies will somehow end up impacting me. And they did. So started renting to this person and they are supposed to pay just first month and deposit and I let them keep the first month because they had a litany of excuses on why they couldn't um, give cash that day, which that was fine because they were gonna pay first month before they moved in anyway. And so they paid the deposit to me and then first month is first month rent is due right away and instantly already problems. So this is where people who act this way, start taking advantage of situations. Um, so he started basically pushing off the, the due date right away. And in fact, his first month payment was through somebody else. Somebody had sent me money via Zelle, which is an instant transaction thing, because he claimed to have all these banking issues and he couldn't do direct deposit or any of those types of things, even though before he moved in, he said that, oh, it's very simple. I could easily do that. We have the exact same bank, um, so it shouldn't be a problem, which it shouldn't be a problem for somebody that's responsible or an actual friend and other things like that. So, um, yeah, so she paid. It was it was five or six days late. Um, so right away, yeah, I knew there was a problem. And even with this person, just to fast forward a little bit, a couple months later, this person even reached out um, and asked if he was still living at the house because she was going to be serving in papers because he owed her money. So um, I won't go into extreme detail on that either, but just there's a few different women who had reached out and said that they had some choice words for him. <laughs> and so he, I think he had been going person to person and kind of leeching resources off of each of these people, you know, similar to what you did to Emily and I. Um, so anyway, so I don't even know how to do this without being mean. So I'll just get into another part. So it's go, as it's going forward, you know, next month is coming up, obviously late again um, by over a week. So. I'm not gonna speculate the next part, but he said he had something occur in his family. You know, once once somebody who's who's basically a, patho a pathological liar and they can't help it and they keep lying and making up excuses why they can't do certain things. Um, like I said earlier, it usually gets quickly flipped on you and they become the victim all of a sudden. So, you know, to make a long story short, he knew that we had multiple family members pass away. So he used that to his advantage when it worked out for him. So in this case, he claimed to be busy or he claimed that he couldn't pay for whatever reason, again, banking and everything, and then tried to make us feel bad by saying a family member of his had passed away and he was spending thousands of dollars. I don't know what he was doing. Supposedly he spent thousands of dollars um, because no other family members were helping and he claimed to have gone back to his hometown. I won't say where it's at um, because this family member, which I confirmed did not pass away. Um, Jesus. So 
I confirmed he didn't because he posts everything on social media. So he was su supposedly in all these different places, which isn't true. Um, very s easily verifiable. And so when Emily and I were in Iceland, you know, he kept saying, oh, tomorrow, you know, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay. I finally let him know, hey, you know, we're going to have to move you out essentially because it just, this isn't working out. We have bills to pay regardless of life events. We had major life events the last year and a half and we still had responsibilities. So regardless of who you're ripping off, you would think that if you you know have this actual friendship, that the last person you would want to um, adversely impact would be a friend. But maybe that's just me, I really don't get it. And I'm not gonna say everything, but just know, I'm just not gonna say anything. Anyway, so we get back in town and I get a call right when we get back in town from our anniversary. Um, I get a call from this person and they say, hey man, um, there's somebody here, These the people that uh, did some yard work. So to rewind real quick, they we had some people come and do some yard work, trim some tree branches, things like that. And although he said he'd take care of it, I had a feeling that wouldn't happen, which it didn't happen. So I get a call and Someone's there to collect and he says, hey, can you, uh, this lady wants money and I can't, you know, the banks are going to close, I don't have any cash and she only takes cash and I, I clearly cannot hand cash over if I'm five hours away. So I said, hey, just let her know I can sell her or I can, uh, what do you call it? Venmo, cash app, whatever, right away. No, 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 she doesn't have Venmo. She doesn't have Venmo, I'll take care of it and uh, tomorrow morning I'll take care of it. And I was like, okay. I'll pay you back, it was 1500 bucks, which is a lot of money, especially for, for somebody who did a lot of work and hasn't been paid for two weeks. And I don't wanna make this story too long, but 10 minutes later I get a text that he says, dude, yeah, I went to the bank, she followed me to the bank, blah, blah, blah. The bank is closed, I already confirmed the bank was closed before he started making this next lie up. And I said, oh, you pulled out cash and gave it to her? And he said, yep, pulled it out. She followed me. Can you believe that? And I had a bunch of crude words for this person. And so I said, yes, yeah, send me the ATM receipt and then I'll get you back um, when I'm in town in a couple weeks, even though I wanted money right then. But if you remember earlier, he doesn't have Venmo, PayPal. None of these things work because he has all these bank issues. So, but it, they, they would have magically resolved themselves if I could send $1,500 there. So of course, I'm not just going to send him money because I, you know, based on his history with these kind of issues, he's lied every single time about every single thing that we've ever talked about. So I got the number for the people that did the work, which is even more frustrating. He purposely used a Hispanic family who didn't have a business license, knowing they couldn't come at, after him. So we would get all this yard work done, and then he would do this, which is somehow get cash from me. So he would earn $1,500 for doing no work, essentially stealing from me and stealing from this family. And so I called and they said, no, we've, I talked to the son because both parents, um, English is their second language. So the son said, you know, we've been over there three or four times. And every time he gives them the run, run around, just like he's done to me and probably everybody else. And this poor kid's like, yeah, we really need the money, this and that. And I'm like, hey, if, you're, if your dad can download Venmo, I can Venmo you right now. And I apologize profusely. I didn't know this was happening. And of course, right away, he's like, yeah, my dad will make a Venmo. So it took two seconds. So there was, that's why he shut them down so quickly because that would have ruined his plan to get money. So paid the kid, told the friend, hey, just paid them. That's when you know he starts not backpedaling, actually dug deeper. Oh man, they're lying to you too, blah, blah, blah. So I gave him an address, their address, which it wasn't because I just gave him a fake address <laughs> to just see if he would keep the lie going, which he did. He claimed he went and got the cash and blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, finally, a few weeks later, maybe a month later, I was able to finally get him to move out. And now we don't have anything to do with the house anymore. Someone else is doing all that, taking care of that. Um, but I went and even helped him move out because 
there was no way he was going to, going to take responsibility and do it on his own. And, you know, I get to the house and he knows that I'm going to help him move out and the dude leaves everything still nasty, like the bathrooms are, I'm not going to, just like I said, I don't want to go too far into it, but doesn't even have the very basic respect that you would give a stranger to lightly clean or anything. So I had to pay somebody, luckily I have a friend who has a cleaning business, so I, I um, let them know that I would, you know, have them clean the house, pay them right away, just like you should do to a friend. And they did an amazing job. So shout out to, to my buddy in uh, Northwest Arkansas for that. But um, I helped them move out. Of course, I'm getting nothing for doing any of this, as in nothing from the friendship, nothing. And I'm just literally counting down the minutes until I can part ways and never have to deal with this again. Um, and this is like 5% of the actual conversations and, and issues that we had. So I don't know what the full point of this video was. Probably just to get it out there because it's embarrassing that I even went through this and I don't know how to really explain it. It just sucks because this is somebody that was potentially supposed to be this really great friend and um, we'd be lifelong buddies and blah, blah, blah. And really it was all just a crock of garbage. So um, it's the first time in my life that I've been like, I've seen comments where people are like, oh yeah, just be careful because people will take advantage of you and um, kind of screw you over and things like that. I've never experienced that until this time. And it kind of took me by surprise. It's just very frustrating. And then it, it's disheartening as well because it's like, dude, why did I, I wasted so much freaking time and energy trying to befriend, befriend this person. And it, it was literally pointless. This dude leeches off everybody. He's probably done that to two other friends by now and countless other women. So it's like, he does this in friendships, relationships, whatever. So it's like, I mean, I have way less stress now that I don't talk to this person at all. Honestly, I feel a thousand times better. But then it creates some apprehension because I'm like, and it's dumb because it's only one person, but it's like there could be, who knows how many people do this to people who are supposed to be like friends. So I don't see the point really. I don't know how to explain it. But I'm gonna try regardless. I'm gonna try to move on from that and potentially develop a friendship here as well. And I've just been so busy with work and moving and we moved into an, another place. We have renters, awesome renters in our, in our loft and we moved into this nice house for the dogs and so everything's all good now. Um, so I just need to basically figure out, hey, how am I gonna move forward with this? With, with this as in finding friends, if that makes sense. Um, I'm just gonna have to do it the good old fashioned way. Say, what's up, dude? You wanna work out or something or go, to, go get a beer or whatever instead of trying to even mess with finding friends online. This is so freaking lame. Uh. Oh my gosh. I don't even know if I'll post this video. What? I guess there's a point. Anyway, um, there's some million things going on in my head right now. So I keep on trying though. It's, it wouldn't be fair of me to write everybody off just because of one a-hole. Um, so best of luck to that person. I know there's a there's a bunch of cool people out there that you know I can technically feed off of you know from a um, from a health standpoint, friendship standpoint. My head is so jumbled up right now. This is embarrassing. And this is almost 20 minutes long. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so. Again, like we started out, thank you so much for being so kind to Emily. 
Luckily, I think YouTube removed the downvote button because this one will probably get a bunch of them. So I won't feel as bad not seeing them, I guess. But uh, yeah, if you've had a similar experience, I guess, with somebody who seemed like they could be a good friend and then something happened between you guys or you girls, whether it be them taking advantage of your, your goodwill or um, some other breakdown of friendship, it'd be interesting to hear. And then what was your perspective, you know, after, after basically everything had calmed down and you had kind of moved forward, um, you know, how did you feel afterward and maybe what did you do to try to move forward with other friendships? Um, especially if it's, you know, other friendships being in a new place, cause we've been here for a few months and I, um, I think that tainted my idea of friendship. That's why I haven't really put any effort into it. Um, but I think that's been a little psychologically damaging. So definitely have to just get back, back get back onto it. Um, yeah, I'll try to make a video next week again when I'm not, when my brain is not so jumbled. I feel like I can't even speak correctly right now. So thank you guys again so much for watching and girls and everybody in between and see you on the next one.